This is about to become an Airbnb property and I'm gonna walk you through that process. Step by step, you will see this property completely transform into a place that is fun and awesome and that people are gonna to wanna to stay in. My name is Sean Rocky Jeech. I've done this hundreds of times. I've been hosting for eight years. And today, you and I are going to create an Airbnb together. This is a big project. This video is episode one. Let's begin. I have got so much that I wanna share with you guys. Wow, this is low. Hi guys. Every room is going to be painted a completely different color. I've already gotten started, I'm ADHD. The living room, I wanna show you as soon as I can, so we're about to do that. This paint is for this room. I've got a wild idea. I bought these sleigh beds, ones that have this really big footer, and the beige color of the sleigh beds combined with like a natural wood color, and then the certain shade of brown that you're about to see, I think is gonna go really well. This is going to be the master bedroom of townhome number one of two. The other one will be another series of videos, I'm sure. Let me give you a tour of the whole place. This is the master bedroom that you saw. Cool fireplace, really big ceilings. Yes, it's going to be brown. I need you to trust me on that. Now for the bathroom. The cool thing about the bathroom is not only does it have double vanities, which is nice for groups of people, but the second section here, we can add like some stools and create a makeup station. To make that happen though, we're going to have to change this lighting that's not nearly good enough. We'll probably have to put a perimeter light around that mirror so you get good even lighting because makeup's an art form. Now here's the thing about masters. A lot of times masters have his and her bathrooms like the double vanities, but for Airbnb, that's not really how this world works. If you have a bathroom with dual vanities, that's a great room to have two queen beds, right? You have two separate groups of people staying, two separate groups of people trying to prep for their night out, dual vanities, two queen beds. This room, we'll also try to stuff two queen beds if we can get away with it. If not, we'll put a king. This is gonna be a version of like navy, it's called Revel Blue. It's not quite as dark as navy. It's gonna be a little bit more bright. Headboards are gonna be completely white. And so we're gonna just try to make this one a little, little bit more like loud, almost primary in color, but it's gonna be awesome. Moving downstairs. This little nook right here, we're probably going to make a makeup station also, maybe like a desk, workstation, makeup area crossover because we're sleeping so many people. Having the extra space for makeup makes a lot of sense. The next third room, it's got low ceilings, which is going to make it kind of interesting. So we're gonna paint this one nearly black. There will be a king headboard here. And what I'm going to try to do is make this place like black and green, almost like jungle-esque and even maybe do some ceiling work where we're hanging gothic lanterns and flower pots from the ceiling to give it like this gothic meets jungle vibe. It should be really, really cool. We're gonna take the shelves off and paint that back wall black, maybe leave the shelves white, something like that. Then this is the dining area and the kitchen. Nothing too special about the kitchen, right? Um, the backsplashes and stuff are all fake. I know the owner of this place. I'm gonna actually tell you how this deal went in this video because I got a lot of free rent, negotiated a good term uh, because, not that he was my friend, because the guy's straight business, but I met his need. And we're gonna talk about that need here a second. Now for the living room. Check this out. Completely orange, head to toe, orange furniture, orange walls, orange everything. I'm even making some custom artwork, one of which is going to be an LED sign right there. It's gonna say something hilariously fun and orange related. Let me know if you can guess what it is. Put it in the comments. Now, the point of this is to completely stand out from everyone else. I was actually inspired to do this monochrome orange thing from a Dubai property I found while coaching one of my students. I was teaching him market research. His properties are gonna be in Dubai. He wanted to know the best places, the best property types, and we stumbled over this property that was just pink pink everything. So I'm like, you know what? Let's do orange and see how it works. So this is going to be loud and fun, designed for large groups. It's going to have a luxury element to it, but a playful one at the same time. Normally we pay people by the hour to do stuff, housekeepers, painters, movers. I'm paying my team, my male team, $20 per hour to do the painting. Because of that, they're not available to do the moving and we're moving some expensive stuff, so we decided to get a professional moving company, and they wanted $45 per hour on average. The one we picked actually was $209 for four people, so it was actually more than 50 bucks an hour. Went with them because they promised to buy anything that they break, but they spent so much time wrapping stuff that I think as opposed to a regular cheaper moving company, we must have paid them an extra five hours of labor just to incessantly wrap things that didn't need wrapping just so that way they didn't break anything. So we spent an extra grand 
on a moving company that was too cautious, in my opinion. So total move cost was over 2,000 bucks to, to move this stuff. The painting so far, we're gonna be projected maybe 30 to 40 hours of labor um, for painting for even just one town because these ceilings are super high. So, and that's like 40 labor total. So two guys, 20 hours, four guys, 10 hours each, something like that. Um, the cost of product, furnishings, stuff like that. I don't have a hard number for you, but still hoping to get it done for less than $10,000 per place in furnishings. But we've got some special things in there that could really drive that price up, but I'll have to show you at the end and notate those costs at the end. Custom artwork, we're spending at least $3,000 in custom artwork, maybe even upwards to five or $6,000. And that doesn't include the paintings that I made because I don't know how to price that. But I'm gonna give you a tour of that stuff and we'll talk about the art and decor budget because I do think our art and decor budget outside of the base furnishings is going to be the primary cost cluster that we think is gonna make us the most money in return. And that's the biggest point, right? It's what are you gonna spend money on that puts money back in your pocket? So let's go. Now these properties do come with a challenge. They're pricey. $4,000 a month for these units. They're not even three bedrooms technically. We've turned the office into a king bed room. It has no interior lights. We're gonna have to solve that, but that's gonna be like the black jungle room. Gonna be super cool. But even for a three bedroom, two and a half bath, $4,000 a month is rich in Dallas for a unit that's gonna go on Airbnb. The reason why is the neighborhood. It's a really good neighborhood, great for families, nice, clean, whatever. Now there's also a risk there. Nice neighborhood, good families, a lot of outcry if there were ever parties. So we're designing these places to not get parties. We're trying to choose our customer in advance with our design style and you're gonna see that unfold. I'm gonna give you my logic. And this is a fun challenge because normally I will say go into areas that are gentrifying where you get your rents for less, where the rest of the properties aren't as good. You're gonna sell the one unit you have and yeah, people are gonna be in a sketchier neighborhood, but we're going to see if with enough good design, we can make a deal that is normally not my standard deal make money. And I hope it does, because otherwise you're gonna see me lose my or you're gonna see me make some. Either way, it's gonna be fun. So pardon the rear shot, my friends. I had to change outfits because I did not want to get paint on my Hunter Hunter sweater. That would have been no fun. I probably would have cried. It's my favorite sweater ever. For those of you who don't know what Hunter Hunter is, it's the best anime ever created. Huh? Huh? And there's a love story in there. Um, a guy named Meruem, he's the king of the ants and he falls in love with this blind girl named Komogi. And it's the best lover story ever, like even better than Romeo and Juliet. <sighs> Painting is always fun, always fun. I'm about to tell you about how this deal went down. It's very important. Look at this color. Look at that nearly black, beautiful color. Wow. So this type of real estate deal that my friend's involved in, I think is really, really cool. It's called an assemblage play. For those of you who don't know, it's where you buy a bunch of neighboring properties. You could even say adjoining. And the goal is to collect them all, kind of like Monopoly. You know, Monopoly is basically a story about assemblage. If you buy four properties on the same block and then you own the whole block, you can sell all four properties at once for a different value, like a land value. And so my friend does some assemblage plays and he is trying to raise money for a different purchase for something else. And so he's trying to sell this assemblage play almost done, but he needs to sell it early. So instead of selling it for its master value, he's trying to sell it at the cap rate. And the thing about cap rates is it's based on what you're making, like what, what you're collecting in rents. So in order for him to sell it at a cap rate, it has to be occupied. So I decided I would make him an offer. And this is why rental arbitrage can be so cool in some situations. I told him, hey, you need rent roll for this. You've got a few unrented townhomes. I'll rent them from you, so that way you can sell it at its actual cap rate faster, because you need to be collecting rent. Um, and I'll sign it like a two year long lease and you know, maybe even hold it till the assemblage is done. But I've got some terms and conditions. And I was like, you know me, I do short term rentals. I would like to do short term rentals at this property. And because I can take multiple townhomes from you and take them really quick, I would like some free rent. The kind of, that was like the general basis. 
right? So we had a couple meetings, I toured the property, he had three available and I only took two because one just wasn't, um, didn't have enough bedrooms. These ones are threes and the other one was only a two. And because of the square footage, he wanted basically the same rent and I said no. So this one, I'm getting eight weeks of rent for free and I was able to talk down his security deposit from one month of rent, which this rent is like 3,900. I, I talked him down a little bit on the rent too. And I got him to agree to a $2,500 security deposit. But with this and the other deal, I got him to give me $3,000 in cash back on top of that, which is really, really cool. So I agreed to pay the security deposit and the first month's rent, but then I get eight weeks of free after the first month is paid. Um, and that's how this deal came to be. It is a larger floor plan, as you guys have seen. It is in a really good neighborhood of Dallas. And that's actually why these, this property is so expensive. Normally, I would never pay $3,900 a month for a three bedroom or more, typically. But in my years of coaching students, I have students in Fort Lauderdale and other cities like that and rent for the right places could be up to like eight or 9,000 a month because Fort Lauderdale, the properties that make all the money are, you know, really pretty properties with pools and all sorts of other stuff. So I decided I'm gonna give it a shot, but now here's where the advice part comes in, guys. When you are doing a deal like this and you are gonna pay a higher amount of rent, there's kind of like an equation for this. If you pay more rent, that means your risk of loss is greater every month. It's like if your mortgage is bigger. So a bigger mortgage, if you collected $0, you have to service a bigger debt. Same thing with rent. If you collected $0 on Airbnb, you still have to pay your entire rent. I call this the risk of ruin in a deal, right? Um, at what, what dollar amount could you get whacked if you failed completely, right? So in this case, if I failed to collect any money on Airbnb, my rents would be $3,900 plus utilities and et cetera, right? So because of that, I need to defend this deal by doing a, a better job with the design. There's more planning on the front end, I guess is what I'm getting at. More ideation. So that way when this deal is done and it's on Airbnb, the, the design will more so guarantee it will get occupied. Now, some of you might go, well, duh, Sean, but let me remind you guys, my 155 Airbnb properties, like my scale to massive size, has largely been studios, one bedrooms, three bedroom apartments and B-class properties, stuff like that. I run majority of my operations through being really, really lean, paying my housekeepers by the hour, being really good at revenue management, stuff like that. It's always about managing the dollar, right? About generating finer bits of revenue for getting up to 100% occupancy and trying to control my costs while I do so. That is typically my operating mark, like style. So this property, I'm taking a different approach, which is something I've been talking a lot about with my students anyway in Cracking Super Roast, which is we need to defend with good design. So back in the day when I first started on Airbnb, say 2015, you could literally just put a bed on the floor and somebody would pay for it. Now there are so many properties that are established on Airbnb that you can't just show up with some any random basic product. Um, people don't need it and they won't pay for just some basic product. So if you wanna make sure you make money on Airbnb, you've gotta design a product that can cut through the noise of the market where everybody's already established, everybody's already making money with products that work. You need to create a product that fits into the market and can generate a sale. And this doesn't necessarily seem so important in, in peak season. A lot of people get started coming into peak season and their properties do just fine. They find out that it's not working in slow season. And the mechanics of this are that in peak season when there's not enough inventory, you'll get booked because all the good stuff gets booked first and then you get booked last if your property is average. But in slow season, all the operators in the space are smart enough to change their prices now. That's not some mysticism thing. So now properties that are really good 
will change their prices in slow season to make sure that they get booked and there are not enough customers for everybody so then you find yourself on the wrong side of slow season with no occupancy because your product is just basic it's a commoditized product it is just a room and some beds so what i'm saying is my summary as i ruin my tape here good design is most important in slow season Sure, it can make you more money in peak season, but that's the part that no one's really worried about. If you wanna stay booked in slow season, you have to prepare the property to reach out and get someone to fall in love with it. You know, before you end up two weeks out with no bookings, you still have to have good pricing strategy. You still have to be a good value in slow season a lot of times, unless your property is the most unique thing in the, in the world, you still have to price to move your product depending on how slow, how slow your season is. But now the days of just dropping your price in slow season, it's really not enough to guarantee success. You also have a product that can sell compared to everybody else who's also dropping their prices. So what do you guys think? Is the dark gonna work? Hang some gothic lanterns and some flower pots from the ceiling. Oh, by the way, I'm also painting the ceiling as well. We're gonna do the whole thing, just like I've been talking about in the videos. Let me wrap this up, I'll see you in the next scene. You see, totally would have got my Hunter Hunter sweater. And let me give you a closeout report on day three. Yeah, wild hair, right? It's what happens when you work three 12 hour days in a row. This has taken three days so far. Two days of it were moving things in, unboxing stuff, and we started painting the first day that we took possession and started moving. So this is the first day that we painted without having to bring in a bunch of stuff. Now we are still getting a bunch of things in. The sleigh beds just came in. We've got these really new couches, sorry. Choose my words. We've got some really cool sleeper chairs. It's like a sleeper sofa, but it's an armchair. I'm gonna show you guys though, it's wild. But anyway, here's the orange room. Completely orange, couch included. I think it looks amazing. And this painting here, we're actually gonna mount it four feet higher. So that way when the door swings open, it doesn't clip the painting because the painting is so wide. So from all the way over here, hey Venus, it's going to be up there and we're gonna downlight it so it adds more presence from here. And of course, the whole idea is for the space to be like immersive, and that way when you're in here, you just kind of feel like you're in this orange thing. I wanna do a custom photo here. Uh, it's gonna be kind of like a product photography thing, which I've never really done a photo like this. I always do like wildlife and landscapes, which you'll see in the other listing that I'm creating. But I wanna take an orange dreamsicle and find a way to make a really cool edgy shot of an orange dreamsicle and put it right there because it would just like make the space look so good in my opinion. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. This is of course day three, um, days four and five. The next two to come, we're gonna be assembling a bunch of beds, painting the two master suites, getting a lot of the art and the plants and stuff put in. And that other room that I painted, hopefully we can get that one completely done. I think. The king mattresses haven't come in yet, they're delayed. But aside from that, we can get it completely done and I can even start hanging all that stuff and try to make it look all gothic and we're gonna see how it looks. If you guys have any questions, thoughts, input, feel free to put it in the comments. Um, love to hear from you guys. Thanks for joining me on this journey to make a couple of Airbnbs. I wanna get more specific so the next video I think I will get into some nuts and bolts, like literally, cause we'll be assembling some stuff. Thank you so much. As always guys, I will see you on the other side.